Hi everybody. Have you ever heard of Zeitgeist? Originally it was a movie in the early days of YouTube, but since it's turned into a meme of many variations that show Jesus as essentially just a repeat of the mythology of various faiths and figures going back for thousands of years. Well, today we're using narrative apologetics tools in the post-Christian missions field to debunk this long-term lie that has probably derailed so many from meaningful relationships with God. At this point in the beginning of the video, I always say something like, you know, please like my videos or dislike. You don't have to agree. It's not about that. It's about helping us survive on the platform and gain traction. That's how you survive. But by the end of today, I'm going to ask you to share this. I'm going to ask you to share with everyone you know so we can reclaim some ground. Originally, Zeitgeist was a movie, and it had some good stuff later in it that started to challenge the epistemological thinking of our time, but it began with this convoluted religious idea, again, that Jesus was nothing more than a made-up mythological figure that took all these pieces from the figures of the past, as you see on the screen. Shredding the Zeitgeist meme once and for all, because it's a farce and a lie. There is no connection at all between these claims and Jesus, and I'm going to prove it to you right now. There are no connections between the various mythologies and Jesus. Not one, not even close. The meme banks on the fact that people won't look it up for themselves. It feeds on the impressionable and the gullible. And I don't mean that to be offensive. We're all susceptible to a certain degree. The purposeful deception of zeitgeist in derailing Christians, it's been too influential because it originally contained those red pill moments, but when you read into it, there's literally not one shred of evidence, not one primary source, not one secondary source except the video or meme, and nothing objective. It is literally a combination of made up ideas, subjective interpretations of random hieroglyphics by people with zero hours of education, and false literary devices. It's a lazy lie, uh, where people who maybe are angry with God or just want to stir stuff up hit share without having done any research for themselves or without thinking about the consequences it might have on people who don't know this deep stuff. And so let's jump right in. It goes something like this. As you can see in the picture, you've got Jesus at the bottom, and then above that you have Dionysus, and you have Krishna, and you have Mithra, and you have Horus. Notice first, it's not the exact same thing for each one. Notice that some of them are random. And notice that there's no consistency between the arguments being made. So we're going to do all of the above first. Let's jump in with uh, Horus. Horus in the mythological stories, depending on which version of the 5,000 year old story of Horus we're talking about, now, Horus was the son of Isis and Osiris. Well, there goes the born of a virgin one right there. Horus is a pagan deity associated with a dozen pagan religions over time. The only reference in Christianity at all is an early writing from Plutarch that simply mentions Horus came to represent the Greek god Harpocrates hundreds of years earlier. An early cult somehow mixed one of the many Horus ideas with a few Christian ideas. There's nothing in this in Christianity at all under any circumstances. Uh, this would be like defining all Orthodox Christianity by Mormonism. And before we go on with Horus, let's keep in mind that we are comparing Jesus Christ, an actual living, breathing human being with a historical record, with a bipedal half-human with the head of a bird. And you're going to have people going, yeah, man, they're just faking Jesus. Horus is the name of a sky god in Egyptian mythology, which designates primarily two deities, Horus the Elder, or Horus the Great, the last born of the first five original gods, and Horus the Younger, the son of Osiris and Isis. Well, there again, there goes the virgin idea. 
According to the historian Jimmy Dunn, Horus is the most important of what are called the avian deities, these bird deities. I'm not suggesting there wouldn't be an interesting conversation between avian deities and the Anunnaki, those who from heaven to earth came. Maybe there are, but it's certainly not in this meme. He also goes on to say, that Horus is depicted so differently in various inscriptions that it's nearly impossible to distinguish the true Horus. Horus is a general term for a great number of falcon deities. He was transformed into the Greek god Harpocrates after Alexander the Great conquered Egypt in 331 BC. Notice the age here says 5,000 years ago in the meme. We don't have any writings from 5,000 years ago that contain this narrative. Horus the Younger, or on the other hand, uh, was the powerful sky god associated with the sun. S-U-N, not S-O-N, but also the moon. He's also associated as a god of war, and he became combined with the sun god Ra to form a new deity. So, in history, he changes into deities hundreds of different times. Jesus never changes. The claims of scripture remain consistent from the very first writings through the present. Let's set Horus aside and take a look at Mithra. Mithra was a Persian god of the rising sun. Here we are with the sky again and S-U-N, sun. He was also a god of contracts, covenants, and friendships. He oversaw the orderly exchange of the seasons. He's best known as one of the most popular gods of the pantheon of polytheistic early Iranian religion, Zoroastrianism. He's linked to the Vedic god Mitra and is often associated with the Roman mystery cult of the god Mithras which flourished from 100 to 400 AD while early Christianity was growing throughout the Roman Empire. But why is it that they say Mithras is the real story and Jesus copied off him? It seems like it's quite the other way around here when you take a close look at it. And this writer goes on to say that there's often been claims that he was the precursor and model for Jesus Christ, but quote, there is absolutely no historical evidence to support this assertion. That takes us to Mithra. Now, Krishna. By the way, I have this particular text. We'll go straight to the source on this. Eighth God, the eighth God. Wow, okay. So various texts being used is a major god of the Hindu pantheon and considered the eighth incarnation of Vishnu. Uh, he's perhaps the most popular of all the heroes of Hindu mythology. Krishna's adventures appear in the uh, Bhagavad Gita, the book I just showed you there, and centuries which describe his eventful youth. We're not, we don't get a description of Jesus's eventful youth, so I don't know where these connections come from. We do get a narrative here that tells us that he was the son of a simple cowherd, not a carpenter like it says here. One day Vishnu, the great Hindu god, pulled two hairs from his own head, one white and one black. The black hair was planted into the womb of Devaki, the princess of the city of Mathura. And so Krishna was born into the Pandava family. That doesn't sound like virgin birth. It sounds like genetic tampering. That's very different than the birth narrative described in the Holy Scriptures, which holds up to scrutiny and actually has historically objective documents that hold up to the evidentiary method. Major difference. So, Krishna, but tradition has it that the God actually acquired 16,108 wives and fathered 180,000 sons. This just doesn't sound like the Jesus we know. Krishna was involved in many escapades in his adventurous youth. Notable among these were his various killings and thrashings of prominent enemies. This is a connection again to Jesus? 
nothing like Jesus. So let me get this straight. We take something like uh, Son of a Carpenter, Eastern Star, and we're supposed to believe that these things discredit Jesus. But then you read the actual narratives of these various figures, and you don't, they're nothing like Jesus. There's no connection at all. Anybody who wants to say it's all the same God, I invite you to compare the supernatural claims being made here. Then give it a try. For example, Krishna was involved in many escapades. Notable among these were his various killings and thrashings of prominent enemies, such as the Ogress, Putana, and the giant bull, Danava, the giant snake, Kalia, and the king of the horses. Are these supernatural claims? I invite you to go look at them. If they are, find out for yourself. I can also invite you to look at the various claims of Christianity. For example, I found it funny that one of the sources for the next deity we're talking about, uh, Dionysus, is covered in the ecclesiastical church history by Eusebius of Nicomedia, the book about the early church history. Fascinating. Called Bacchus a nature god of fruitfulness and vegetation, especially known as a god of wine and ecstasy. There it is. That's why on our little zeitgeist meme it says turn water into wine. That's a flat out lie. No, Dionysus just happened to be a god of wine. And you'd have to know pagan religions of the time to understand these various polytheistic ideas. Dionysus was the son of Zeus and Samel a daughter of Cadmus, the king of Thebes. Well, I thought he was born of a virgin. Apparently not. Now let's address this December 25th thing. So one of our examples is 5,000 years old, 3,900 years old, 2,900 years old, 2,500 years old, and then Jesus 2,000 years ago. Oh, how authoritative. Well, who's the next one? Who's after Jesus? Clearly there has to be. Maybe it's me, maybe it's you. So, you know, we've used the Gregorian calendar since the late 1600s, early 1700s. Before that, we used the Julian calendar. This is just in the West, America and Europe, mind you. Today in Israel, it's the year 5782. Every civilization, each with a cycle of roughly 230 years, according to Sir John Glubb's Fate of Empires, has its own calendars of days, months, and years. Let's go back to the 500s AD when Dionysus Exegus was born in the year 470 AD. He died in 544 AD. And he's the inventor of the Anno Domini dating system, which gave us the year zero and BC for everything before and zero to the AD for everything after. My point is we can't get even close to time periods on many of these ancient deities. The Egyptians alone had a solar calendar, a lunar calendar, and a civil calendar. I'm going to post on the screen while I'm talking the writings of various Egyptologists who make it clear this is not some type of airtight science where they have books like this that tell them everything that happened. They master very small and intricate details of various parts of dynastic life, like symbols on a tomb or... Um, writing or speaking. For this lie to work, we have to go from Jesus back and then get these random tidbits of Jesus' actual life and apply them to the various deities. So let's see, we've undone Born of a Virgin for all of them. I like under Horus how it says star in the east. Oh man, boy, have you totally debunked Jesus. You wrote star, there's a star in the east. Walked on water. I can't find that anywhere. It probably comes from this idea of, uh, at some point, one of the Egyptian deities being ripped apart and his different body parts being sent to different parts of the kingdom. But nowhere in objective primary source writing supported by the evidentiary method will you find that. Restored sight, healed the sick, was crucified, dead for three days and resurrected. Lie, 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 lie. Flat out lie. That is nowhere. Mithra, 3,200 years ago, born of a virgin. We proved that one wrong. Born on December 25th, 
How do we know? We just talked about the calendars and how it's impossible to suggest such a thing from 3,200 years ago. Had 12 disciples? Really? It sounds like he had thousands and thousands and thousands of wives and children in his mythology narrative. I didn't see anything about 12 disciples. Performed miracles, dead for three days and resurrected. Lie, lie, lie. Flat out lie. I challenge anybody to show me where that's the case. Krishna, born of a virgin, we debunked that. Star in the East again. You know what? Me and you must be Jesus Christ, because if I go out my front door, there's a star in the east there. Maybe we could add ourselves to this meme here. Performed miracles, called Son of God. No, no, we read Krishna. Krishna wasn't called Son of God, not anywhere. Son of a carpenter? Nope, that's a direct lie. We read that he was son of a cow herder. Resurrected. Hmm. Oh boy, you got us. The fact that a deity might have been resurrected in a mythology narrative. You're right, Jesus must be fake, you know. Dionysus, born of a virgin. Nope, we saw both his parents described in the narrative. Born on December 25th. Where does this come from? We didn't see born on a date of anything on any of these. A traveling teacher. Oh man, it got us now. Jesus is fake because Dionysus in the year 2500 was a, I'm sorry, 2,500 years ago, Dionysus was a traveling teacher. Turned water into wine. No, that was a direct lie. We saw that he was the god of wine. Called holy child. Okay, wow. Okay, this is fake. This will derail you from the truth. And I wanna point something out. The reason this misguides so many people is because we live in an age of moral relativism where people don't know what to believe. In the digital age, we get every religion in the world at our fingertips, and we don't know which is true and which is not. It can be confusing, but it's really not. If I were to take the book of Zoroaster, and the Bhagavad Gita, and a copy of the Quran, and a copy of the Holy Book of Buddhism, whatever, whatever, a book a stack this high and then on this side the Holy Bible this book makes supernatural claims that when put to the test stand up not only with objectively factual written sources using the evidentiary method which has always been the academic standard for whether or not something is proof which also cultivates subjective spiritual experiences in the lives of readers that leads to changes in life. It makes claims. Those claims can be put to the test. None of these make those claims. Stop trying to compare this to these. If you read these books, they're not going to make the claims that are in the Holy Bible. They're not going to make the claims of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ happened once in human history for a reason and he continues to do the work he does in the world today with the movement of the gospel for a reason. Zeitgeist is a lie and I want your help. I want you to share this and I want you to let people know. You can support our work. We have a PayPal. All oh, those people, there he is. He's one of those people that's asking people for money and driving a Ferrari. Oh, he's one of those bad religious people. No, no, I'm asking you to give me a dollar or two to pay for my website, buy some groceries, maybe get a few uh, um, subscriptions to have some videos and music to produce the work that I do, maybe pay for a little bit of the research. You can also become a channel member. You can be a deacon, an archbishop, or a crusader. You can support us on Patreon at three different tiers. You can purchase one of the books I've written myself, amazon.com slash author slash Nicholas Garrett. You can buy some of our gimmicky merch like cups and hats and shirts. Uh, I do like my Truth First Christianity cup across the St. Andrew. I have a shirt, a Truth First First Christianity shirt with a picture that I took myself in the catacombs of the Franciscan Monastery. Uh, 
You ought to stick with us if it's the first video of ours you're watching. Check it out right now while we just finished a two video series on why there are so many denominations. We just finished part one of part nine of the Dead Sea Scrolls and we're going to be having a second part of that coming out on Armageddon, the, the scroll of war. We always have something interesting going on on this channel. We tell the truth. We're offering narrative apologetics tools uh, for the, uh, for, for the post-Christian missions field. And it's all about truth first Christianity. We want to separate the objective and factual from the subjective and traditional for the benefit of our faith. Visit our website at evangelistnickgarrett.com. I'll close us in prayer. God, please be enough for us today. Please use this video to open the eyes of people, if not to directly come to you, Lord Jesus, just to take a look at what I'm saying today and find these facts for themselves and let the proof be what it is. God, we ask all these things in the name of Jesus. And my friends, my regular subscribers, thanks for the slight detour and sticking with me. I will see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.